You're watching Talking Audio Engineering with special guest Simon Morrow. And they had nothing to say. <laughs> um, all right. So, do you want to jump in with some questions from your Facebook forum? Yes. So, we have the first question is from JB Bartlett. Mm. How much mixing do you do in the in the box versus out of the box, and why? Cool. I'll, I'll send that one to you because you're you're hybrid, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would. We're say, both kind of hybrid, but you're like yeah. you've got a lot more gear than I do. Yeah. What do they say? For every friend you don't have, you have more gear. So you make choices in life. <laughs> um, so. I mix out of the box hybrid most of the time that I'm mixing. The times where I mix in the box, there's two scenarios. One if, is if it's for film and TV. So I was mixing orchestral stuff last year through one of the lockdowns and it all had to be synced and, you know, things having to be edited and recalled with tight deadlines. So I did all of that in the box. Easier to sync, easier to open it up and make changes. Um, I also do in the box for demos. So in pre-production and, you know, before actual mixing, quite happy for it to be in the box. And that's because it's instant recallability and I'm not actually doing any mixing. It's pretty much just static levels and, uh, you know, maybe a generic reverb or something like that. I did consider and attempt an in-the-box mix for a client that was paying us to do demo production. And I thought, they're just not paying me enough to turn all my gear on. So I'll just do it in the box. Just can't afford the power. Can't, well, well, it was, you know, the, what, it's just, it does not make sense for me to turn on. I know, the I'm just having a dig. No, it's fun. <laughs> it's funny. Um, but, you know, I guess, yeah, the reality is the power wouldn't have cost that much. It's that that whole thing of, you know, why should I turn this on if they're not paying me much? And the interesting thing was it was so much harder and slower than working with my hardware. So here really? I was trying to save time. I thought, oh, you know, they don't, you know, they haven't paid me to turn this on. I'm just going to do it in the box. I was also curious because I hadn't mixed in the box for years. Um, my hybrid setup, as you know, is an SSL Sigma with various bits of hardware. I have 64 ins and outs and, you know, a lot of it is bus processing. A lot of it is parallel, um, you know, effects and parallel processing. I am intending to incorporate more hardware inserts like compressors and EQs, but I generally do most of that in the box. Um, anyway, it was so much slower and so much harder to get a good result. So why do you think that was? Well, you, you mix with hardware. So why, why do you reach for uh, a piece of analog when you've got plenty of plugins? I guess it has a sound. It has a sound that you just can't get from digital sometimes. And yeah. sometimes digital beats it out. Um, as we know from setting up this podcast and all the noise <laughs> that we had to deal with, analog gear is noisy and sometimes yeah. you don't want that, that noise. But there's a certain type of squishiness to analog that I like on certain things. Mm. Most of the time I would be using it in places where I can... I have an escape route, so I'd be using it at the very beginning or I'd be using it during the mix as an insert that mm -hmm. I can take off or I'd be using it on the mix bus at the very end of the chain and that way if I have to do any revisions, yes, it's it's going to be a full pass. It's not going to be a real time. It's not going to be a, uh, you know, what's the what's the quick option? So you can just press a button and it just bounces out. In, like offline bounce or something? Offline bounce. Yeah. And, you know, that's great. Um, 
but sometimes, yeah, just having the hardware on either the front end or the back end, just doing some pre-processing, pre-processing of, um, you know, inserts and stuff like that with the hardware. Uh, I find that's the easiest way to do it because you've also, the way I, I do it is I've got playlists. So I can process with hardware and then I can choose later. No, actually, I don't like the sound of that. Mm. And I can go back or I can use it for part of a, you know, part of the song. That's um, that's a cool idea that processing, printing and and putting it in playlists. Um, you know, so it sounds like a similar, you know, a similar conclusion to me. It's easier and faster to get a result. And that's why I do it. And until you actually do it, it's easy to fall into the trap of do it all in the box. And you can absolutely do great mixes in the box. And, you know, there are more and more mix with the masters uh, producers and mixes that are going in the box. It's not the summing that I particularly care about as being analog. It's the processing with hardware so those producers that are going in the box many of them are still using hardware inserts as an example i just recently bought a lexicon pcm 96 i'd wanted a lexicon for for years and it was a hardware reverb color that i was missing and i bought it without listening to it it arrived i plugged it in and it just sounds so lush. It decays way into the distance. Mm. And it does not sound like a plugin. And I need to be able to work quickly to remain objective. And by being able to just send my tracks out through this hardware, I instantly... This, maybe this is a, a good way to explain it. When I'm in the box, there's this hazy fog over everything. I might, might have an answer for that. <laughs> I, I bet it's to do with phase shift. And I noticed that the fab filter EQ in, in natural phase actually addresses that. But there's a fogginess. And I particularly hear it in the low mids. And this is from stuff that other people are producing as well that I know is in the box. The ITB has this sound. As soon as I pipe it out to my hardware, everything has its own space. There's, there are, you know, there's this def definition around sounds. And I can intentionally smush them and glue them together. But I'm actually removing this film of blah. What is that what is that misty fog, Daniel? I think it's aliasing. Which is which is just it's digital. It's the sound of digital. Well that really. would make sense. Um and I, I think that the solution to that is at the moment the only solution I've got is hosting plugins within VST format within Pro Tools so that I can oversample plugins that maybe don't come with that option. Sound Toys in particular, I've noticed, you know, Decapitator, it's been my favorite plugin for mm. forever, but it just, it's, it's got a lot of crap in there and you have to oversample it. Unfortunately, there's, um, yeah, I, I, I actually found, and I did a, a test on my YouTube channel where you can hear the difference. There's just a, this whole new depth to the sound. It's exactly like you're describing. I don't know if it's maybe the mm. same thing, but there's definitely a haze. And that haze can also contribute to adding a bit of a sheen or this appearance of it being a little bit brighter mm -hmm. than it should be. Uh which some people gravitate towards, but if you if you think of it as a 3D space, 
and you you compare the two, uh, I I feel like you know I can pick out the vocal, mm. I can pick out the guitar, I can pick out all these things. There's no there's no kind of blurred blurred lines between mm. you, you know those instruments when I'm over sampling. It's a pain in the ass to do though. I wish there was a different way to do it. Yeah. Um, obviously, well, suppose- mixing it. 192 is is not the yeah. is not the answer for that but or plugins using only plugins that do oversampling oversampling yeah well look that that's kind of what i hear so there's two things there there's the that fogginess that i dislike because it it sounds like lack of clarity but the material may still be bright. So it's, yeah, foggy, particularly in the low mids. Um, so short answer, it's faster and easier to get a sound that I want. 